You'll stand for next to me, please. If you raise your right hand, ma'am. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, except for God. I do. Thank you. If you have a seat, please. If you'll speak up into that smaller black microphone there in front of you, that'll help me hear. Okay. If you'll tell me both your first name and last name and spell them both. Dabney Kirk, D-A-B-N-E-Y, last name K-I-R-K. -K. Thank you. Questions, Mr. Watson? Ms. Kirk, by whom are you employed? I'm employed by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, assigned to the Nashville Crime Laboratory in the Layton Print Unit. And uh, tell us the educational background and training that you have that qualifies you to be a forensic science scientist in the Layton Print Unit. I received a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology and Psychology from Belmont University. I've also successfully completed a two-year training period at the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation um, where I processed evidence for the presence of latent prints. I've compared thousands of latent prints to known impressions, made in identifications when possible. I report my results and testify when needed. Um, I've also read numerous articles and attended lectures in the area of latent prints. I'm a member of the International Association for Identification as well as a member of the TBI's Violent Crime Response Team. And have you ever testified uh, as an expert in the area of latent fingerprints before? Yes, I have. And in how many cases, if you know? Um, somewhere between 10 and 15. It's not very often that we go. Okay. And uh, have you ever been uh, denied or not been able to testify as an expert? No, I have not. Your Honor, I'd offer Ms. Uh, Kirk is an expert in the field of latent fingerprints. Any objections? No, sir. Well, I'll give her opinion. Ms. Kirk, you've told us that uh, you are an expert in the field of latent prints. Tell us what a latent print is. Um, if you look at your hands, you'll see that there is a ridge detail on your hands and your palms. And when you have sweat or oily material on your hands, you leave a reproduction of those ridges on an item when you touch it. And that's what we consider a latent print. And uh, after you find, after a latent print has been developed, what do you do with the information you receive? Um, in some cases, the latent prints are submitted to us. In some cases, the evidence we process for the latent prints and we collect them ourselves. Once an identifiable latent print has been collected, then it's compared to any known um, people involved in the case, and then identifications are made at that point. And uh, it, is there a difference between a latent print and an identifiable print? Um, a latent print is the reproduction of those ridges. Sometimes there's not enough to be able to compare it. So an identifiable latent print is something that you can compare and identify to a person. Now, tell me again how many, quote, latent prints you have compar compared in your career. In my training, I would say thousands. Um, it depends. There's a lot of, lots of cases and identifiable prints. There's, I'd say thousands is a good estimate. Okay. And how many times do you tell us you testify? Somewhere between 10 and 15. If you've, uh, if you've examined thousands and thousands of latent prints, why is it you only testify occasionally? Um, it's just not very often that we actually end up in court. Sometimes the report is the only thing that goes. We don't, we don't go to explain it. Okay. Is it also true that sometimes there, as you said, is insufficient ridge detail? Yes. You can see me standing here. Yes. You see my hand up here? Yes. If somebody came and examined that from my latent prints, would they find them? It's possible to touch an item and not leave a latent print. If you consider that the latent print is a, it's the oils and the residues, or if the latent print is left in a substance, um, if you've washed your hands recently, if you're wearing gloves, um, depending on the surface texture of the item itself. If it's highly textured um, or a rough surface, you're not going to leave a latent print. Um, there's a lot of different factors that would cause a print not to necessarily be identifiable on an item. 
if when I touched this uh, podium a while ago with my hand, and if I left a latent print, would it be there tomorrow? There's no way for me to time date a print. There's, I can't tell you when it was left. I can just tell you if it's identifiable. And you can't tell how long it'll stay there. Correct. Might be gone now, correct? When there's friction, the latent print's fragile, so any type of friction can mess up a print. It's just, it's all in how it's handled and how it's packaged. In relationship to uh, some items sent to you by Mike Taylor of the Murfreesboro Police Department uh, and a request for examination, did you examine any items where the name of the subject was Shantirka Madden and the alleged victim was Clantina Stewart? Yes, I did. And if you would, tell the jury what items you received and when you received them. I received a broken knife, a phone, and some other knives. And I received them on June 13th of 2011. And did you uh, conduct an examination of those three items designed to determine if they had any latent prints and or identifiable prints? Yes, I processed those items. And in regard to what you referred to as a broken knife, did you give that an exhibit number? Um, it was given an exhibit number of 02A. Okay. And did that description of a broken knife indicate the location from where it had been retrieved? According to my submittal form, it was located in a dumpster. Okay. And did, were you able to find any identifiable latent prints on that particular item? No, I was not. What was the next item you were asked to examine? Uh, a black iPhone. Okay, and what was that exhibit number? Um, that's my exhibit number 11A. And was that phone indicated as being from the living room? Yes, sir. And were you able to uh, find any identifiable latent prints on that particular phone? No, I was not. And then exhibit 12A, tell us what that was, please, ma'am. 12A is two black handled knives from the dumpster. And your examination of those two knives from the dumpster, were you able to identify any latent prints? No, I was not. Now, Ms. Kirk, in, in some of the information that I have uh, copies of, I have some photographs of a broken knife. Do you have those photographs in your file? Yes, I do. Are they the original photographs or color photographs? Yes, they are. And uh, if I could ask to approach and get those, Your Honor. Sure. Ms. Kirk, I'm showing you what you've just handed me, and I'm going to refer to uh, this number right down here. And can you tell me what that number represents, please? Um, that is the laboratory number that's assigned at TBI. Um, it is a breakdown of the first two ones are for the year, for 2011. One is for the Nashville Crime Laboratory, and then the last digits are an individual lab number created um, for this individual case. And does this photograph accurately depict the broken knife you've testified about examining for latent prints? Yes, it does. And uh, can you tell us what type of blade it has? This, I would say it's a serrated edge. Okay. And 
in the picture of the handle and the blade, both sides are shown. Is that also correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, is this your picture? Yes. You don't have another one by any chance? No. Do you know if any of the other uh, members of the TBI lab that are here have another photograph? Um, we all photographed it at the time that we worked it, but I'm not sure okay. how many copies they have. Uh, Judge, I don't know if you have a color copy or a good one in there. We can try. Ms. Kimbrough, if you'll get that one, let me copy that. Make it a lot of late file exhibit after you review it, Mr. Watson, to make sure it makes it look good. And, uh, Ms. Kirk, did you generate a report of your findings in this case? Yes, I did. And let me show you this document. And I'll ask you to look at this and tell me if you can identify that. Yes, that is the laboratory number assigned for this case. And that corresponds with the number we just saw on the picture of the night. Yes, it does. And it shows that the report was issued on this date. Yes. June the 28th of 2011. And is that your signature? Yes, it is. And will you make this an exhibit to your testimony? Yes. Is that the next number exhibit? One, Ms. Kirk, does the fact that you did not find any identifiable fingerprint. Well, let me add, let me withdraw that and ask you this. Had you found an identifiable fingerprint on that knife, that broken knife, the telephone, or the other two knives, did you have fingerprints of Shantirica Madden to compare those two? Um, I processed the evidence, and because I did not have any identifiable prints, I did not have any fingerprint impressions to compare. Had you found a print that was identifiable, would you have requested a submission of Miss Madden's fingerprints? Yes, I would. But not having found any, you did not do that? Correct. Can you tell this jury the fact that you didn't find any fingerprint on that knife means that she never handled it? Um, as I explained earlier, it's possible to leave, um, to touch an item and not leave a print. So I can't tell whether somebody's handled it. I can just say that I didn't find any prints that were identifiable. As a matter of fact, if she told someone she handled it, the fact that there's no print on there wouldn't contradict that statement, would it? I can only testify that I didn't find any prints on that knife. Thank you. And this is the exhibit, John. And the next summary exhibit. And you want to give her back her original? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I believe that you and I have spoken about this case before, is that correct? That is correct. And uh, was Mr. Newman, I believe he was there also that day? Yes, he was. And have you also spoken to Mr. Brandon in yes. this case? Yes, I have. That's all. Is that question, Mr. Brandon? Yes, sir. Ms. Kirk, <clears throat> you, the general asked you, does your, I don't know how exactly he said it, but you talked about a request for exam, is that right? Yes, that's correct. And that is a form that is generated by the TBI, um, and they give it out to law enforcement agencies, and the law enforcement agency fills that out and sends it into you, and that's what you conduct your examination off of. Is that right? That's correct. And in this particular case, can you tell me, do you remember how many pages was in the request for exam that was sent to you all? Um, mine is marked as 12 pages. Okay. And I don't... Does the, can I hand this up and ask her, are these the 12 pages? Do you may put 12 pages up here and have 12 pages up there. Okay. Would this be the first page that you received? Let me see if I can. Is that right, ma'am? Um, that is one of the pages, but that one's marked as my page number five. Okay, so let me see if. 
I'll put that as five, and, and then the page behind it would be six. Let's see, is that your page one? No. What page is that for you? That appears to be my page number seven. Okay. Hey, watch it. Now I'll read towards 12 pages. The submission is 12 pages long. That's what Mr. Brandon said. You know. I think it's what he said. That That's what she, what she said. 12 pages long? Mine's mark is one of 12 and then each page. Uh, you, Mr. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, questions about that? Yes, sir. Ms. Kirk, can you tell me, did you, did you act... When a request for examination is sent in, in this case, 12 pages of it, that doesn't mean that you go through all 12 pages. Is that right? Um, when the evidence is submitted, they um, assign the evidence that's going to be processed for latent prints to me. So those are the exhibits that I pull and okay. I work. And so out of these 12 pages, tell us which ones you worked. Well, it's... Exhibit 2A was on page number 3. And then 11 and 12 are both on my page number 9. And those are the items that were assigned for me to work latent prints on. Okay, and so would this be one of the pages that you used? Yes. Okay, and can you read to us what the examination requested is? DNA testing, latent prints, microanalysis to determine if two pieces match and to determine if weapon matches victim's injuries. Test to determine the presence of any food particle on knife. Okay. And then each of these forms has their two-page forms, correct? Yes, most of them are. Okay. And can you read to us page two? On the above date, officers responded to an apartment where they located the victim of a fatal stab wound to the chest. The victim's roommate was located in the parking lot. The victim's roommate was questioned regarding the stabbing and admitted to stabbing her roommate. The suspect, Shantarika Madid, stated that she stabbed her out of self-defense. Numerous items were collected from the scene and examination is requested to in order to more clearly understand the events that took place that evening. Okay. Now I would ask that these 12 pages be marked as the next number to exhibit. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, in looking for prints, were you able to determine, did you look at the knives? Yes, I did. And in fact, your investigation starts with a visual inspection. Would that be true? Um, yes. Okay. And did you determine if there was any substances on these knives? Um, I made a note on my exhibit 02A, which was the broken knife, that there was a reddish brown stain on both pieces. Okay. And was that what appeared to be blood? I can only say that it was a reddish brown stain. Okay. okay. Now, did you observe any food? Um, I don't have anything noted. I normally make some sort of a note if there's debris or some sort of substance on it, but the reddish brown stain is the only thing I have a note of. Okay. Now, did you measure the knives? Um, we measured um, the handle part as four and an eighth inch. Okay. And then what about the, now did that include the portion of blade that was still connected to the handle? Yes. Okay. And what about the blade portion? Um, I did not measure that part. We were trying to um, just document the handle part because that was the area that um, the serologist was swabbing. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Other questions? Any questions from our jurors? If I see any, thank you, ma'am. You sit down. You're free to stay in the corner, free to go.